Jesus, he's the first and he's the last. Jesus, God, you're worthy. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Bless God. Bless God. It is so good to be in the house of God. It's a privilege and an honor to be standing here. And who could it be but God? He's so, 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 so good. He is so good. We hear it all the time, but I'm here to tell you that God is really, really able. It doesn't matter what you're going through or what your situation or circumstance is. It doesn't matter how far gone you think it is. God is a God that he will step in when you least expect it. He will pick you up and he will turn you around and he will plant your feet on solid ground. That's the kind of God that I serve. And if you serve a God who's able, just lift your hands and say hallelujah. Just lift your hands and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to welcome everybody to another Sunday morning service. It is so good to see everybody in the building. Sunday after Sunday, it gets better and better. And I just want to welcome everybody who's joining us online, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, or Zoom. We're just so glad to have you with us. And I want to greet my bishop, Bishop Simpson, and our, my pastor, Pastor Grange, and all God's wonderful people. Isn't God a good God? Isn't God a good God? Praise God. This morning's scripture is taken from St. Luke 17, verses 11 to 17. And I'll ask Sister Frederica to read that for us in Jesus' name. Bless the one and Lord, everyone. Our scripture lesson is taken from St. Luke 17. And verse 11 to 19, and we'll read alternatively. And I will begin. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Thank you, Jesus. And fell down on his face at his feet. Give him thanks. I will get and fell down at his at his on his face and fell at his feet and give thanks. And he was a Samaritan. They are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. Nineteen and all together. Bless the Lord. We are in debt, the reading of the holy words of Jesus Christ. And we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I just want to thank Sister Frederica for reading our morning scripture. And as we're about to approach the throne of grace, there is one prayer request for Evangelist Smith's father who is grievously ill. Please remember him and pray for him. He's in Jamaica. And there aren't any more prayer requests, but I... I just want to encourage somebody today because, as I mentioned before, you know, sometimes we're in situations where we feel like there's no way that God can use us and can turn us around and can save us, and you feel like God has forgotten you, but I'm here to tell you that that is not so. And, and God does things so strategically. He, he's a mysterious God. He'll pull you out of things and you don't even know that it happened. You're wondering when this, did, did this happen? How did it happen? But it's God. And, and we search all around hoping to fill some void inside, but I'm here to let you know that the only true satisfaction comes from the blood of Jesus. 
No matter what you do, no matter where you go, you will always end up empty. But if you come to Jesus, he can give you peace. Not only does he heal the body, but he heals the mind. He's a provider. He's a deliverer. He's a comforter. He gives us strength when we're weak and we feel like we can't go on. I don't know what kind of God you serve, but the God I serve, he's amazing. He's wonderful. And, and, and words fail me, words fail me, but God, you are so good. God, you are so good. You are so good. When you think that everybody has forgotten about you, God remembers you. When you think that you have no use, God will use you. If you know that God can do something for you, just lift your hand and say, God, it's me. It's me alone. I'm standing here, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're so structured that we don't come to the altar until it's altar call. We don't clap until we're told to clap. We don't sing until we're told to sing. But God is already here. He's already here. And he's able. We hear this all the time, but you haven't heard it from me. And I'm here to tell you that God is able. He will do it. He will do it. He never lies. And if he said it, he will do it. Can you lift your hands and say hallelujah? If you're able to stand, stand on your feet and say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we go into prayer, I'm going to ask Sister Sharon Dixon to take us to the throne of grace. And as I said, we don't need to wait until altar call to cry out to Jesus. I know that I've come and I've been in my seat and I said, God, what's going on? I want something different. I don't come to church every Sunday because I have nothing else to do. I come because I'm broken and I'm looking for restoration. I come because I'm sick and I'm looking for healing. God is able and he can do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 God, you're so worthy. Jesus breaks every fetter.
Jesus, this morning, we are found in your house. Like the one leper who returned to give you thanks. We return, Jesus. We return to give you thanks. For we were cast away. We were left to die, Jesus. But we thank you this morning. What a God we serve. What a good God. Hallelujah. We sing you the praises this morning. We give you the glory this morning, Jesus. For having it not been for you, God. Where would we be this morning? Had it not been for your goodness and your mercies. Lord Jesus, that's why we are in your house. We come there, Jesus. Hallelujah. We come that we may give you all that belong unto you, Jesus. Remember this service this morning. Remember this service this morning. Send your angels, God, to guard the doors of Bethel. Lord Jesus, I pray this morning that whatever be done today will be done to the glory and honor of your name, Jesus. God, we pray for our leaders. We pray for our bishop, God, in his absence. We pray, dear Jesus, that you continue to touch his body. We pray, dear God, for our pastor, Pastor Granger. Oh, God, Elder Scott, this morning, Jesus, we present these people before you, Jesus, as they stand to lead your people, just as Moses, Jesus, we put him forward to lead the children of Israel. Yes, God, they're going to be complainers. Yes, God, there will be those that murmurs. But, Lord Jesus, we look up to you, God, for we know, dear Jesus, who have called us. We know who we are serving this morning, dear God. Lord, we pray for the sick one, Jesus. For the sinless father, dear Jesus. Distance is no good for you, God. You can heal him wherever he is, dear Jesus. We know you as the healer. We know you, Jesus, can do it, God. Sister Carol's mother, dear God, who is in the hospital, Jesus. We put her before you, Jesus. You know the ailment, God. You know why she's there, God. Lord God, because of that this morning, we pray you heal dear Jesus. And your mouth of God is sick. We put them before you, Jesus. We put those who are online before you, God. We put your children, dear God. We put, oh God, my Father, all the country of Ukraine before you, God. Those who are suffering, Jesus. Even those in Russia, dear God. Because your people, dear God, who are afflicted also, dear Jesus. We are suffering. Jesus, I've been touched, dear God, by this war. But we know, dear God, who we serve. We know who we believe, dear God. And we pray you touch your people. We pray you anoint your people, God. Give them courage, God, to the situation, God. We pray for the leaders of the world, the G7 nation, dear God. Every one of them, God, we put them before you. God, hallelujah. They are making their plans, dear God. But we know whatever it is, God, you can intercept your plan. For your children are suffering from the decision of men, God. And we pray this day, God, that you help us, Lord Jesus. Help us to look up, dear Jesus. For we see, dear God, also the fulfillment of the Bible, the word of God. is fulfilling our eyes, dear Jesus. I pray, dear God, help us, Lord God, to be sober. Jesus, make sure God uh, or alcohols uh, and drink the solid rock. Uh, remember the one this morning, Jesus, uh, who presents your word. Uh, let the word come forth in power. Lord God, it touch some soul, dear Jesus. Uh, our visitors, they miss God. Uh, we thank you for them, God. Uh, let the word drop in their heart uh, that they will turn and seek you. Uh, for it is a day and time, God, uh, where men need to turn ahead uh, and look at Jesus, look at the cross. Look where you bled and died. Lord Jesus, time for us, oh God. Gird our loins up, dear Jesus. For I'm a surety, God. You are coming again. I pray for this service. Bless us this day, oh God, as we say thank you in Jesus' name.
send the praises up. Send the praises up. If you're online, send the praises up. This is not an ordinary place. This is not an ordinary worship. Hallelujah. This is worship that begets miracles. This is worship that begets healing. This is worship that restores Bethel. Come on, somebody. This is not ordinary worship. This is worship that restores the glory of God in his house. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. That's who he is. That's who he is. That's who he is. Sorry. March 13th. This is not an ordinary worship. This is not an ordinary service. Because our God is not an ordinary God. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I dare you. Come on. Come on. Just a little bit more. Step out of yourself. Step into the spirit and see if you don't meet God. See if God doesn't meet you. See if God don't answer your prayer. Somebody give God a praise in here. Somebody give God a praise in here. March 13th. Write it down. This is not ordinary worship. This is not ordinary deliverance. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Healing is happening back home. Healing is happening someplace else because you're giving God all the glory and all the praise. Lift your hands and give him some praise. Lift your hands and give him some thanks. Miracle worker. Who wants a miracle this morning? Who has already received a miracle? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Waymaker. Promise keeper, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Can we just take 30 more seconds and just worship him? If we came to church to worship him, 30 more seconds shouldn't be a problem. Hallelujah. I said if we came to worship him, Hallelujah. one more minute shouldn't be. Come on, praise team. Hallelujah, Come on, Jesus. praise team. I said Hallelujah, one more minute name. shouldn't be a problem. I took time out of my day. Come to worship him. I wish everybody would worship him. I wish everybody would worship him. I wish everybody would feel his glory. I wish everybody would sense his presence. I wish everybody would know that he is God. Hallelujah. God is in the house. I said, God is in this house. Go tell my enemies I'm under the rock. Because God is in this house. There is safety in Zion. There's a blessing in Zion. Come on somebody. There's an anointing in Zion that you can't get anywhere else. I want to say thank you Lord. I want to say thank you Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? If we just worship all morning, would that be okay? Yes. Jesus. Do you think God would honor that? Hallelujah. I said do you think God would honor that? By the way, I can't worship for you. You can't worship for me. You got to worship God for yourself. Anybody got something that they can worship God for? Anybody got something that they want to give God thanks for? Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's going to be all right, Elder Scott. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. We welcome his presence. We welcome in his presence. I said we welcome his presence. Your presence is like heaven to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody's been new. Aren't you glad you love the Lord? Aren't you glad you made that decision to walk with God? Aren't you glad?
yourself. You got to know him for yourself. Hallelujah. Oh, how beautiful the presence of the Lord here today. Give me that encounter. Let me know that you are here, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Something is being renewed. Something is being restored. Something is being kindled. The presence of God. The presence of God. Hallelujah. Make that commitment in your mind today. As He's renewing you. As He's restoring you. You're going to follow Him. Comes what may. I will. A declaration that you will make today. That I will make today. Hallelujah. 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 God don't mind praises. I said God don't mind praises. God inhabits the praises of his people. How many folks feel revived already? Come on, how many folks feel revived already? Hallelujah, hallelujah. And still much more to get from God today. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah as you're being seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. When God walks in like that, I'm just... Hallelujah. I said when God walks in like that. Hallelujah. You may be seated, but I'm up here still praising God. Come on, somebody. I'm here, here just saying thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know the service might have moved on, but I'm still stuck here with God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody might be quiet, but my spirit is still yearning after God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, somebody's still worshiping. Uh, somebody's still worshiping over there. Somebody knows that God is good over there. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I still want more, God. Uh, I'm just about right there, God. Uh, but I got to stay at your feet. Uh, I got to see your face this morning, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody's crying out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Don't worry about anybody else. If you need to praise God right now, you just go ahead. If you need to lift your hands one more time, you just go ahead. Hallelujah. 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 You don't know what I came to church for. You don't know what my needs were. Hallelujah. But I heard the song and I declared, he is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a promise keeper. And even when I don't feel it, some of you cried yourself to sleep this week. But even when you don't feel it, he's working he's working he's working he's working you don't see it hallelujah everybody's walking out of me I don't see it but he's working he's working somebody has been blessed today Shout unto your God and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're going to need this confidence when you go back to work tomorrow. You're going to need this confidence when you go back to school tomorrow. You're going to need this confidence when you face your family, when you leave this place. He's working, he's working, he's working, he's working, he's working. He's working. And I want to say thank you, Lord, today for your glory and for your grace. Put your heads together one more time as we just said. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. You know, when we get into things like this, this is really, we, we got to change where we put this announcement, say, man, so that we can just, <laughs> so that we can just praise and just worship God. There's a beautiful spirit in this place. Hallelujah. I said, this presence of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. 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 No need moving forward if the spirit hasn't moved, if the cloud hasn't lifted yet. 
but we just give it to God. Just give it to God. Just give it to God. Miracles, miracles, miracles. I don't know who has a back pain this morning, but a miracle right now. Happening in your body, happening in your back, happening in your stomach right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I declare it, I declare it in the presence of the Lord God Almighty today. Whoever needs healing here today, right in your seat, right in your seat, right in your seat, we declare hallelujah he was wounded for our transgressions uh, he was bruised uh, with his, uh, by, uh, uh, he was bruised for our iniquities and with his stripes we are healed this morning Jesus 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 thank you Lord thank you Lord just give God one more minute hallelujah Hallelujah. Just give God one more minute. Hallelujah. 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 He's permeating over the airways. Deliverance this morning. Deliverance this morning. Deliverance this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. Mm. Yes. Peace, God.
It's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I am the Lord. Wherever you are in the sanctuary, just look across to your neighbor and start praying for them. Hallelujah. Just look towards somebody there in the sanctuary. And start praying for them. Jesus, I am, I am the Lord, Lord that healeth thee. That he let when me. God takes over, the healing angel is in the I house. Am the Lord. Hallelujah. Your Who will step in? Who will step in? Who will step in? Do you want your healing? You Do you want your healing? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, yes, Lord. I, I want my healing.
leaders that are here this morning. We're going to go straight to the word at this point in time. But I want you to understand that this is a Holy Ghost church. This is a Holy Ghost church. And when God moves, we, we go with the leading of where God moves. Prophecy has gone forth. There's healing in the house. There's healing in the house. Yes, I know we have order and all that, but there are times when God steps in. And I pray that this one day, as we put up the man of God to minister to your soul, you begin to realize that this is not an ordinary service, but God has interrupted it just for you. Just for you, he's interrupted it. So God bless you today. As we sit in prayer, as the man of God comes to us today, none other than Evangelist Smith, Let's receive him, hallelujah, with the praise of the Lord and put your hands together. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. We're going to keep in the spirit. We're going to keep in the spirit. We're going to keep in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just continue to worship the Lord in this house. Said, come on and worship the Lord in this house. For those of you who are looking on who may not have understood what just would happen, is that this is God's house. And when He shows up, we must decrease so that He can increase. This is God's house, and when He shows up, He have His way. And that's all that it is. Praise the Lord Jesus. We entertain his presence. But when he shows up, he takes precedence. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so don't look around and wonder what is happening. It is just God. Hallelujah. Having his way. It's just God that's doing his thing. And we just have to go along with what God is doing. Praise the Lord Jesus. Healing was in the house. Yes. Hallelujah. And if you didn't claim your yes, healing, sir. it's on you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can I say that again? I said healing was in the house. Yes. Deliverance is in the house. Yes. Victory is in the house. Yes. Breakthrough is in the house. Yes. And if you don't claim yours, it's on you. Because when God shows up in the house. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is. Hallelujah, there is liberty. Praise the Lord Jesus. I was told to just bring it home today. Hallelujah, but I believe that God has laid something on my heart. I'm going to try to concise it and break it down and make it as simple as I can. But I just got to say what God has laid on my heart. Hallelujah. 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 Song said, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for your journey. Lord, you brought me from a mighty long way. Lord, I to 
Simpson and Lady Simpson, Pastor Grange, Lady Grange, all the elders and officers in their respectful position, and all of God's children today, accept greetings in the all-powerful name of Jesus Christ. Greeting my wife and family who always support and is there with me and for me. I just want them to know today that I appreciate them Amen. and I love them. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. You know, when I got the news on Sunday to please call home because my father wasn't doing well, you know, the only thing I knew how to do was pray. So I called everybody I knew that could pray. And then I heard that Monday he was sent home from the hospital. And then Tuesday he collapsed. We had to rush him back. His blood count went from seven to four. He was so weak. And then the news came that whatever he has was spread to his blood, and to his bones. And so he is in a position where the family is thinking now that they need to start making arrangements. And for those of you who love souls, see as much as I didn't have a good father-son relationship with my father, I did preach to him. And to this day he has not yet given his life to God. So it pains my heart that I'm about to lose a father. But it pains me even more that if he dies, he dies without a hope. And while I was praying, the only thing that came to me was, Lord, I thank you. In Sunday school this morning, we learned about the songwriter who lost everything. Lost his wife and his four daughters. And he still sat down and said, it is well. And so whatever we may be faced with in this life, whatever tragedy or circumstance, situation that might bring us to our knees, at the end of the day, God still deserves the praise. Amen. 
And so today, while I was searching, when I got the call to minister today, I said, Lord, with all of this pain and mental instability that I'm going through, the only thing that came to me was, Lord, I thank you. And I thank him. I try to get through this without crying. I'm sorry. God led me to Luke chapter 17. And for those of us who are consider ourselves to be students of the word, for those of us who find solace in the word of God, when I look through Luke chapter 17, there is so much in there that we could lead a two-week convocation and preach something different every night. But God brought me to the lepers. And there is something there that I want us to understand. And I won't go too much in too much theology or, or, or church history. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it short because I was told just to bring it home. You've already seen the move of God. And so this is just what we would say in Jamaica, brought up for you to go home with. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, there is something that is called the Levitical Law. And within the Levitical Law, there is something called the Law of Leprosy. And all this does, if you read Leviticus chapter 13, it tells you how you identify what leprosy is and how to go about treating those persons that has the disease. And so rules are given and outlined by which the priests must judge whether an individual has leprosy or not. I want us to understand that it was the priest and not a physician or a doctor that would diagnose an individual with leprosy. That is important for us to point out. And he would diagnose based on the symptoms that was evident, whether it was a swelling or scab, a bright spot what was called a bike, an inflammation, whether it was in the head or in the beard, because it was said that it was there that it attacked first. In other words, leprosy disfigures your, your face. In modern time, modern medicine, it is called handsome disease. And when I look at it, I couldn't understand, Pastor, why they would call something that makes somebody that ugly, that distorted, handsome but that is what it is referred to in in modern medicine but it was an infectious highly infectious disease that didn't have any known cure that's what it was and it was equally uh, hard to diagnose and even more difficult to cure they, they couldn't find any cure for leprosy, Elder Scott. And so when somebody is diagnosed with this infectious disease, uh, oh God Almighty, they had to give up everything. Mighty God, they had to put on raggedy clothes. Oh God Almighty, and they had to vacate their home. Oh God Almighty, they had to live outside the camp. They had to give up their name. They had to give up their occupation. They had to give up their families. Uh, they had to give up any religious rights or responsibilities that they hold. Uh, they couldn't go to the shop and buy groceries. Uh, they couldn't go to the synagogue and pray at the altar. Uh, they couldn't mingle with normal people. Uh, but they were considered outcasts. Uh, 
and so they would go outside the city walls and like what we have now what they call the homeless pandemic where when you go to some areas of the city you have what is called tent cities uh, oh god almighty we are drug addicts and homeless people uh, seem to find common ground now, it was this way that the leprosy, those who had leprosy, this was how they lived. Now, they had to live outside, my God, now, from everything and everyone that they knew and loved. Now, can you imagine Elder Scott now, having to live away from Sister Shirley and your daughters? Now, can you imagine you cannot go to work to earn a living? Uh, oh God Almighty, when you're hungry, you got to wait until everybody yes. went to bed. Uh, and then you had to walk the streets of the city of Nile. Uh, oh God Almighty, and go dumpster diving uh, just to find something to eat. Uh, but this was how they lived. Uh, oh God Almighty, because of their condition. Uh, oh God Almighty, they were, they were, they, they live like paupers. Uh, oh God Almighty. Uh, oh God, the Mishnah tells us uh, that the rabbis would consider these people walking dead uh, because they resemble what we call in today's world zombies. Uh, oh God Almighty, they were dead to the world, uh, but they were still walking in the world. Uh, and so when you see these people, uh, oh God Almighty, you had to take stand. Uh, you had to, to, to dress back a little bit. Uh, as a matter of fact, the law states uh, that when a leprosy comes near persons, uh, oh God, they had to stand at least 50 paces away. Uh, and then they had to call attention to themselves. Uh, oh God Almighty, they had to shout unclean. Uh, they had to shout unclean. Uh, so that people who didn't have leprosy uh, could, could, could not come close to them. Uh, does that rem remind you of something? Uh, we have what is called social distancing. Uh, oh God, because we cannot come within six feet uh, of those persons who are infected with what we have now as coronavirus. Uh, oh God Almighty, but coronavirus, brethren, uh, is not as severe uh, as what leprosy is. Uh, you're talking about balls and sores uh, and cuts and bruises uh, that was all over the body. Uh, oh God Almighty, Elder, you couldn't lie down. Uh, you couldn't sit down. Uh, you couldn't stand. Uh, there is no rest. Uh, oh God Almighty, when you sit, you're in pain. Uh, if you stand, you're in pain. Uh, if you lie down, you're in pain. Uh, it got to a point. Uh, where the Jewish leader thought that leprosy uh, was a plague from God. Uh, they thought that leprosy uh, was God's punishment upon people uh, because of their sin. Uh, oh God, and it was God alone uh, that could give the healing for such a terrible disease. Uh, mighty God, the law states uh, that it was not a doctor or a physician uh, that could effect any medication or treatment uh, or cure. Uh, but it was only the priest. Uh, now understand, brethren, it was the priest uh, that had to diagnose the sickness. Uh, and it was the priest uh, that had to pronounce them clean. Uh, but it was not the priest uh, that could heal them. Uh, it was not the priest uh, that could administer any form of healing. Uh, it was God and God alone. Uh, oh God Almighty, but it was God's representative uh, that was upon this earth uh, that was given the responsibility uh, to diagnose the sickness. Uh, it was God's representative uh, that was upon the earth uh, that could call them. Uh, Oh God Almighty, that they were cleansed, which is why James declared in James, oh God Almighty, he said, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders, oh God Almighty, the elders of the church, and let them pray over you. Can I tell you here today that sometimes you go through some stuff in life and you run to the doctor. Uh, and you run to the pharmacist uh, and you run to the hospital uh, and you run to the nurse uh, but you never thought for one minute uh, to run to God uh, you never thought for one minute uh, to come to the house 
house of God uh, and to find the altar uh, and to look at the pastor, the man of God uh, and say pray uh, over my life uh, but God put us to stuff uh, oh God almighty that we can reach him We depend on everything else. God Almighty, we run through everybody else before we think about going to God. My God. My God. My God. Let me see if I can bring this home. The Bible says, Elder. That Jesus was heading to Jerusalem. And he needs go through a certain place. A certain place. My God. Now these men couldn't go to church, Elder. They couldn't go to the synagogue. Brother Pinnock. They couldn't visit their family, so they couldn't talk to their family. They couldn't hang out with their friends or talk to anyone. They found solace among themselves because they were isolated from every and anything that they knew to be normal. And when I read this, Elder, he said, God, Jesus was going to Jerusalem. And he had to go through a certain place. And the Bible said that they heard. Now, I, I, I look at that, Elder, and I said, if they couldn't go into the city, if they couldn't go to the synagogue, they couldn't talk to their family, they couldn't congregate with their friends, how did they hear about Jesus? How did they know about the miracles that they perform? God Almighty. He tells me that it doesn't matter where you are or who you are with or what circumstance that you're in. God can reach you anywhere that you are. It wasn't possible for them to hear about Jesus. It wasn't possible for them to hear about the many miracles that he performed. But somehow they knew who Jesus was. Somehow they heard about the miracles that he had brought to so many. Oh God Almighty. And so they thought to themselves. Oh God Almighty we can either stay here in this camp and be an outcast for the rest of our lives. We can either stay here in this camp and never be able to see our family again. We can stay in this camp, Elder, and not be able to embrace your wife and children anymore. But we have a choice. Oh, God Almighty, because Jesus is passing through the village and we have an opportunity. Oh, God Almighty, to meet this healer. Uh, we have the opportunity, Bishop, uh, to reach this healer, this miracle worker. Uh, and so they made up in their mind, uh, oh God Almighty, that they were going to go to a place uh, where when Jesus is passing, uh, they can see him and, and be able uh, to call to him. Uh, the Bible says uh, and I want to go back to something I said uh, because if they couldn't talk to their, their, their family uh, and if they couldn't go to the synagogue to pray uh, and if they couldn't go to the city uh, and if they couldn't talk to their friends uh, how did they recognize uh, who Jesus is uh, because Jesus was walking by himself uh, oh God almighty Jesus uh, oh God they say everywhere Jesus went uh, that multitude followed him. Uh, oh God Almighty. So not only did they hear uh, about who Jesus was, uh, but they were able to recognize uh, who Jesus is. Uh, the Bible says uh, that when they saw him, uh, oh God Almighty, it tells me that they knew 
uh, who exactly Jesus is. Uh, I don't know who you are today, uh, but I'm here to tell you you need to have a personal uh, experience, a personal relationship uh, with Jesus for yourself. Uh, you ought to know the God that you serve. Uh, you ought to know the God that you worship. Uh, you ought to know the God that you live for. Uh, and anywhere Jesus is, uh, you have to be able to recognize him for yourself. So they cried. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bishop, they heard about him. They saw him. And, 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 and they followed the Levitical order. Because God is a God of order. God is a, a God of principle. Hallelujah. So even though they knew that Jesus could heal them, Brother Pinnock, and even though they knew who Jesus is, the Bible said they didn't even go close. Oh God, elder. But the Bible said they stood afar off. And so they adhered to the law. Because the law states you had to stay at least 50 paces. And so the Bible said they stood afar off. Oh God Almighty, when you're in line with the word of God. When you have line upon line. And precepts upon precepts. God will meet you wherever you are. So they stood afar off. The Bible said they cried Jesus. And if they felt like they didn't get his attention. If they felt like Jesus was not sufficient. The Bible said they added master. Oh God Almighty have mercy upon us. Understand that us there means. That it was not just one of them that was crying out. But all of them cried out. Jesus. Master. Uh, have mercy upon me uh, oh God almighty Jesus did not touch them uh, oh God almighty Jesus had the ability uh, oh God elder Walters to just speak the word uh, and say you are healed uh, Jesus had the ability uh, to walk over to them and lay his hand uh, oh God almighty and said you are healed uh, but I tell you that he's a God of order and he's a God of principle and even though Jesus came to fulfill the law oh God almighty he had not yet died salvation was not yet paid for redemption was not yet bought and so he adhered to the law and he said go show yourself to the priest He came to fulfill the law. But the law was still in effect. And he understood that only the priests could tell them that they were clean. Even though he had the ability, Bishop. Oh God Almighty, to say you are healed. Oh God Almighty, even though he had the ability. Oh God Almighty, to breathe upon them. They could be healed. He decided to go the root of the law because principles must be maintained. Now, I understand this, brethren. And I'm winding down because this is the point I want to get to us. Oh, God Almighty. Going to the priest was only reserved for those who were already cleansed. They could only go to the priest if they were already cleansed. But Jesus didn't heal them. Jesus didn't take away the leprosy. Mighty God. They were still leprous. But Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And this is where I want to get to now. Because understand that they didn't argue. Uh, they didn't beg for mercy uh, they didn't cry uh, oh God almighty they didn't say Lord but I'm not yet healed uh, they didn't say Jesus I'm not yet cleansed uh, 
mighty God the Bible say uh, that they turned around and they went to the synagogue uh, to find the priest uh, oh God almighty when you mix uh, what you have heard uh, with the faith you have in God uh, oh God almighty uh, it is faith uh, the Bible says uh, that honors God uh, mighty God uh, oh he will tell us pastor uh, that faith is now the substance of things that is hoped for oh God and the evidence of things not seen I may not have heard that I'm healed I may not have heard that I'm cleansed but if God says it and that's where it is Oh God Almighty, if God says it, then who am I to question it? But I think that if God tell you you're healed, oh God Almighty, don't tell no doctor nothing. But if God says it, oh God Almighty, just mix what you have heard with the faith that you have in God. And your healing will be materialized. Because that's the word. And as I said, God is a God of order. He honors his word. Elder is helping me preach. You don't have to see it to believe it. But you just have to accept it. Hallelujah. And that is why, because healing is in the house. Oh, thank you, Auntie B. Because victory is in the house. Oh, God Almighty, it's, it's here. Mighty God, all you got to do is believe it and receive it. Because God honors his word. I want us to look at the turn of events here. And then I'm going to close and get out of your way. The Bible says, Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. Yes, sir. Without any other word. My God. The Bible then says, as they went. There was not another instruction. There was not another word spoken. There was not another utterance made. Go show yourself to the priest. As they went. Ella Scott. If you've been living in sackcloth and ashes. If every walk you walk, you feel pain. If every time you sit down, you feel pain. If every time you lie on your bed, you're in pain. If you start walking, you must notice something different. Because the Bible said, as they went, mighty God, oh God, I believe somebody did this. And they said, hold on a minute. Something feels different. I believe somebody looked at their hand and they said, wait a minute. Something is different. I believe they, let they hold up their garment and they look around and they said, something feels different. I believe they looked at each other and said, I've never seen you in this light before. But because as they went, let me tell you something. God word is in accordance with God. And he did say that faith without work yes. is dead. You have to but there is something required on your side. You 
cannot come to church every Sunday and come to this altar and talk about Lord I want, I want, I want, I want and you never reach out and say I'm going to take it Brother Pinnock, if you build a chair and you look at the chair and you say to yourself, I believe that chair could take my weight. But you never sit in it. That's what faith is. I believe, Elder, that the chair can take my weight. All 200 and something pound of me. The chair will take my weight. But if I don't sit in the chair, I could stand there all I want and say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. But until I take it and sit in it. I will never know. And that's what faith is. You have to demonstrate what you believe. And so you can tell me every day I believe in Jesus, I believe in God. But if you don't do something to prove it, you're not talking to me yet. So as they went, the Bible says all oh, ten of them realized something different. They realized they were cleansed. Now there was a ritualistic thing that they had to do. When they go to the priest, they not only had to show themselves to the priest, but they had to follow uh, a, a certain sacrificial uh, uh, thing that was set up and they had to still stay away from their family for a limited time before they could go home. There was a ritualistic, there was a tradition, there was a custom that they had to follow even though they were cleansed. They couldn't go home right away. And though ten of them realized that they were cleansed, nine of them decided, I'm going to go through the custom. I'm going to follow the tradition. I'm going I'm to do the ritual. But one of them decided and said, hold on, Ella. Why do I have to follow tradition? Why, have, uh, why do I have to follow customs? What I want is relationship. Customs and tradition and rituals will do nothing for me. I want relationship. And because I know where this came from. I don't need to go show myself to the priest. And so watch this. The Bible said 10 were cleansed. But the one that returned, he was healed. Because cleansing was for the outward appearance. You have to change on the inside. So they were cleansed. And they were happy because they were cleansed. But I want more than just a cleansing. I want more than just an outward appearance. Bible said he was healed. And when he realized that he was healed, the Bible said he went back and with the same loud voice that he cried for mercy, he glorified God. You know what our problem is? When we're in need, 
We have the loudest shout. We cry the most tears. We are broken the most. And when we get our healing, we keep quiet. We don't testify about God's goodness. When you overcome by your testimony, but you refuse to testify. <laughs> oh God Almighty, when you have cancer, everybody in the church know. When you have diabetes, everybody in the church know. Why? Because everybody must pray for you. You dance around this church and you cry because you want deliverance. But when it comes, where's that energy? Where is that loud voice? Where is that cry? The Bible said he lifted up his voice and glorified God and fell at his feet because he wanted relationship. So Lord, I thank you. God, I thank you, Jesus. I just don't want cleansing, Jesus. But I need healing. Mighty God, I need my heart healed. I need my mind healed. I need my soul healed. Yes, God, I need your cleansing. But God, I need your healing. Because I want relationship. God, my, my healing is in relationship. God, mighty. Oh, God, we believe in too much customs and traditions and rit ritualistic movements. Oh, God Almighty, and we shy away from relationship with God. Oh, God Almighty, but if you need healing today, hallelujah. Mighty God, can we stand in this house? Oh, God Almighty, we want to say thank you, Jesus. Mighty God, help us not to be ungrateful. Oh, God. The problem with the nine Lord, was not that they, they, they were unthankful. It wasn't that they weren't they were ungrateful. They didn't want relationships. The Bible made it a point to mention that the man was a Samaritan. And if you understand, Samaritans and Jews don't mix. They had no dealing with each other. But just to show how the heart can change. said he was a Samaritan. I'm here to tell you today, it doesn't matter what background you're coming from. It doesn't matter what ethnicity you belong to. It doesn't matter what your origin are. God is a God for everybody. Mighty God in this world that is filled with so many uh, isms and schisms. I'm here to tell you that God hasn't changed. And he wants to be in relationship with you. Hallelujah. Are you thankful today? Are you happy that you are cleansed? Are you just satisfied with your cleansing? But you have not yet been healed. You have not yet been changed on the inside. Are you here? Will you come to this altar? I know you have already come because healing was called out. But can you come for a change in your heart and your soul? Hallelujah. Can we not be ungrateful? Ah. And just give him the thanks that he deserves. He deserves. He deserves. He deserves. Hallelujah. 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 Is there one today? I would say, Lord, I'm thankful. 
Lord, I thank you for your cleansing. I thank you for your direction. I thank you for your word. But God, I need to be healed. Will you come? Will you come today? Will you come today? Hallelujah. Disturb the spirit today. It is spoken to somebody that needs healing. Clarity, clarity, clarity. Healing. Hallelujah. I heard this young lady 
it's backslidden, but she wants to return to the Lord. Somebody give God a praise here today. Somebody's getting healed. Come on, somebody's getting healed. Come on, give God some praise in here. Give God some praise. Hallelujah, that's all right. That's all right to cry. Just lift your hands and give God some praise in here. Is there anybody else? Hallelujah. That God has cleansed today through the washing of his word. But yet you want to be healed today. Hallelujah. We're going to talk with her. Hallelujah. We're going to pray with her. Hallelujah. This is, this is why we preach. This is why we worship. So that people will know the presence and they'll feel the presence of God. Let's challenge our friends. Let's challenge our neighbors. Get them in the presence of God. Hallelujah. And when they're in the presence of God, God will deliver them. We're going to close in prayer at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're all going to pray today. Hallelujah. Ask God to cover her. Ask God to cover you. And ask God to cover the man of God. Amen. I believe Brother, Brother Robinson called this morning. And he said that his son, uh, the little boy, this usually sit on that side, is be going through an operation tomorrow. We're going to make sure that we put him before the Lord. Hallelujah. This message was not by accident today. Come on, this message was not by accident. Praise the Lord. Let's just pray at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for remembering us today, God, from the beginning right to the end, God. God, we're stepping aside so that you, God, can have preeminence so that you can take front and center, God. Thank you for every praise, every worship, every song, God. Thank you for everyone that led through this service. Thank you, Lord, for your manservant that delivered the word of God as you gave it to him, God. And Father, I know that he's had a difficult week. But in the midst of his difficulty, God, you are there with him to bring forth the anointed word this morning. Cover him, we pray, God. Reach right now and touch his father wherever he is, God. He's not asking for money. He's not asking for houses. He's not asking for land. But, Father, somehow you walk into that hospital room, or that room where he is, God, and turn his heart towards you. That every word that he's heard about the word of God will now, God, begin to germinate in his heart and his spirit. And he will cry out, Abba, Father. You said your word will not return unto you, void, God. So heal each and every one. Remember that young boy tomorrow, God. Father, you are a healer. You are a healer, God. You're a miracle worker. You're a promise keeper, God. So, Father, today, reach down and touch that young boy, God. Father, whatever that need is, you are a miracle working God. Somebody believe God with me. Somebody believe God with me. Hallelujah. And Father, we will declare your glory that you are a miracle working God. Bless each and every one of your people today, God. Those that are in the building, those that are online, God, we just want to say thank you for blessing each and every one of us. And if there be any glory and there be any praise, God, we want to give it unto you today. And we want to say thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Talking about the Lord. Let's go on.
on, church. The Holy Ghost is still here. If you want to be baptized in Jesus' name, the water is ready. Oh, something. Oh, oh, something. Like a stream running So what? Happy? Somebody happy today? When I think of Jesus, oh, what He has done for me. Oh, together for the man of God today. Beautiful word. I want to thank you. Just keep staying where you are so God could feel in the heart of his people. Hallelujah. God bless you today. What a beautiful day. We come to praise. We come to worship God. God bless your sister. You're coming home. You're coming home. You're coming to a good place. Coming to a good place. Amen. We're going to work with you. Amen. And if you see somebody that's new in church, make sure you do greet them. Amen. Make them feel welcome. Amen. This is the place where God dwells. Amen. We don't normally go this long, but when God takes over, you know, we do what God wants us to do. I was just sitting there. Some of you watch movies for three hours, four hours. Amen. Hockey games for three hours, four hours. Amen. Just to spend a little time in the presence of God. It is worth it. It is worth it. It is worth it. God bless you. 
Tonight, I'm going to ask you all to just come back on. We have a ladies' night tonight. Amen. Ladies' night tonight. So we're going to ask you all to come. Amen. I'll be leaving town for a little while. So I'd just like to just share some things with, with all of you tonight. So if we could just make sure that everybody is on tonight. And we'll just uh, share some stuff with you just before you dismiss at the end of service tonight. Amen. Let's continue to pray for one another. I do have to give a shout out to the men. They had a fellowship yesterday and it was just absolutely wonderful. Put your hands together for the men. I mean, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. They're coming, they're coming. And everybody's now getting back into the swing of things. And we thank God. It's been a long two years. It's been a long two years. But we're praying for each other. Amen. Let's get together. Great fellowship. And God's going to bless each and every one of you. Hallelujah. And now may the abiding grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Love of God the Father, full fellowship of the Holy Spirit and Comforter, rest, remain, and abide us at all until Jesus come again. Amen. Six o'clock tonight, 445 for Christian education.